The appointment of Yuri Lutsenko as uh, Prosecutor General is the fourth since the Euromaidan and the third Petro Poroshenko. It runs in a long line, therefore, of um, prosecutors who don't really have public trust either inside Ukraine or abroad. Is this a mistake um, on the part of President Poroshenko or should we now be really talking about the sabotage of the rule of law and the fight against corruption and the implementation of justice? The kind of things that um, people went onto the streets for during the Orange Revolution and the Euromaidan. Uh, for most, I think, people I would meet in Ukraine, including soldiers on the front line, um, this is more akin to, to sabotage of the Euromaidan. Um, I've just come back from the um, ATO, the anti-terrorist operation front line. Um, I was at the hottest part of that. Um, it's, it's a point called the Shakhtar, because it used to be a coal mine, um, and um, where we heard gunfire. And uh, the soldiers don't have any, um, any nice words. None of the soldiers we met on any of the points, the places we went to, do not have any good things to say about the current president of Ukraine. Um, they all talk about the fact that there's a need to finish the Euromaidan and that this incumbent president is blocking the implementation of the Euromaidan. And the release of Nadia Savchenko today is likely to be in the same vein. She's likely to argue the same kind of thing. Um, she's also, I believe, going to be saying that the Euromaidan values that she fought for as well, because she was on the Euromaidan, and what soldiers are fighting for on the front line today in Ukraine have not been implemented. Um, I talked um, at one military base with a soldier who is originally from, um, from Sambir, uh, where my father is from, and he was um, one of the Sotnya commanders of the self-defense units on the Euromaidan. All of the Sotnya commanders and their, and, their, and their units went immediately to fight. They volunteered to fight in the spring of 2014. Many of his fellow Sonia commanders have been killed. Um, he's still fighting. Um, and, of course, people like that are inevitably going to be very angry that their revolution is being stolen from them again, um, even though we're talking about um, bloodshed on the Euromaidan and many, many patriots dying on the front line in the ATO. So the appointment of Yuri Lutsenko will not bring any confidence to Ukrainians and to Westerners um, looking at Ukraine that President Poroshenko is finally coming, becoming serious about the issues of rule of law, justice and fighting corruption. In fact, Yuri Lutsenko admitted when he took up the position that not a single criminal case against the former regime is actually in the works. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there is no rule of law in Ukraine because you can bankrupt a country, you can murder people, and you can betray your country because Yanukovych called for Russian forces to come into Ukraine when he was in exile in February of 2014, you can do all of those three steps and get away with it. You, you can make one mistake. You can appoint one wrong prosecutor, sure. Um, but you can't appoint four wrong prosecutors. Then this isn't a line of, um, this is a continuous, as it were, um, policy of having no interest in implementing those three crucial areas of the Euromaidan, which is fighting corruption, justice, and the rule of law. And those are key areas um, to bring a kind of a good, good kind of factor back to the Ukrainian population, which is undergoing tough and painful economic, financial, and social reforms, such as, for example, massive increase in utility prices. 
Nadia Savchenko will have the same opinions about this as the soldiers on the front line I talk to. And that is, we need to finish the Euro Maidan. And that the current authorities are blocking this. This is the view of the soldiers, and I believe it will be the view of Nadia Savchenko as well. She'll, I don't think she'll be any different. She, after all, was also a participant in the Euro Maidan. It um, all has a terrible deja vu of 2005. Ukrainian politicians seem to think that they can uh, hoodwink Ukrainians and the West into sort of, you know, accepting the reality on the ground that they put forward. And, and then therefore they keep making the same kind of steps and mistakes as the past. In 2005, Viktor Yushchenko appointed Roman Zvarej. Do we remember him? He was um, from New York. Um, he'd lived in Ukraine since the mid-90s. He, like Lutsenko, had no legal training. Um, but worse still, Zvarej, from the Ukrainian diaspora, so we should have high standards for him. Um, he lied about having an MA and a PhD from Columbia University. Um, in fact, he only had an, a BA from a rather unknown New York um, community college, if I'm not mistaken. And he didn't last long. He lasted eight months. It was a, it was a scandal, um, his appointment. And Yuri Lutsenko's will be also a scandal. Um, he's already backtracked this week um, from the criticism he himself was making of the prosecutor's office, um, and that is that he will not be sacking um, any of the deputy prosecutors who... Um, were involved in sabotaging the implementation of criminal charges against members of the former Yanukovych regime. So is it any wonder there is political tension in Ukraine when nobody from the Yanukovych gang has been criminally prosecuted, no Berkut officer, no party region's officials, in fact, they've been let go or been allowed to flee to Russia, such as Sergei Kluyev, or been free from house arrest, like Mr. Yefremov, who was the head of the party regions faction. Um, so they're allowed to get away with it, um, with doing all, all of the misdeeds. And then, is it any wonder that none of the soldiers, not a single soldier I talked to, an officer, um, had anything positive to say about Ukraine's president. Not a single one. That obviously is a very dangerous and combustible uh, mix. In fact, I talked to a... Um, I can only call some of the women um, who are involved in voluntary work on the front line angels. They are literally angels. Um, people bringing um, civil society um, goods to the front line, the ones which, with whom I travel usually, um, also, the women on the front line who are providing voluntary help as medics, for example. And there's one particular one um, who I met today for the second time from Ivana Frankivsk, a pensioner, a medic, who is providing um, medical services to wounded soldiers. Um, and her family has ties to um, Poroshenko's first prosecutor, Yerema, um, and she said uh, her, her disillusionment with President Poroshenko began when he appointed Yerema because she knew who Yerema was. Um, and we read only a few weeks ago that Prosecutor General Yerema um, was on holiday in Abu in the United Arab Emirates, um, staying in a hotel that cost $1,000 a night. Well, you know, I mean, where's he got that money from? So... I, I, I think that um, the president is, 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 by his actions in not implementing demands of the Euromaidan, at a time when you have um, a lot of people who are angry on the front line, they're angry at the Minsk Accords, um, they're angry at the blocking of the Euromaidan values in Kiev, um, and the painful reforms that families are going through, uh, which may be required, but they are still nevertheless painful 
on the social, economic and financial. And that inevitably is going to create, I think, tension. And throwing Sauchenko into that um, into that kind of bubble, um, maybe that was the reason President Putin um, decided to release uh, Nadia Sauchenko. Because she inevitably is going to be highly critical of the Ukrainian president and the blocking of reforms and the lack of leadership on the what should be done about the Donbass and the front line. Um, but she's inevitably going to be thinking along the lines of um, Ukraine's troops that um, whilst they are holding the line for Ukraine on the front line and seeing their comrades die this week, seven soldiers died um, and many more were wounded. Um, the Euro Maidan values, which they all fought for, um, are being blocked in, in Kiev. And that inevitably creates a combustible mix. Um, and I wouldn't put this past leading to preterm parliamentary elections. Um, and certainly it's going to lead to a drop in the ratings of President Poroshenko. It's going to make him highly difficult for him to be re-elected for a second term. And then that already leaves open many things. In fact, I would go one step further and to say that the um, there are two centers of political instability in Ukraine. The first center is the president, President Poroshenko. By not implementing, by sabotaging or blocking the implementation of Euromaidan values, justice, fighting corruption, rule of law, he is creating instability in the country. He's creating tension, anger, bitterness, that um, at a time when you know we had deaths on the Euromaidan and we continue to have deaths on the front line. So that's one center. The second center of instability in Ukraine is the... West, particularly Europeans, pushing President Poroshenko to implement um, certain things in the Euro in the Minsk peace agreement, such as holding local elections and adopting a special status for the uh, separatist areas before Russia does any steps itself. And the two key steps are returning the border to Ukrainian control and removing Russian occupation forces from the Donbass um, region. Um, by Europe pushing and pressurizing President Poroshenko to take those two steps, that also is creating instability. Because if person, President Poroshenko attempted to go down that road, um, they would be inevitably, um, again, a repeat of riots we had last year, and and bitterness and... and, and, and where this would lead is very difficult to know. We saw last Friday in Kiev um, a rally by 2,000 supporters of Azov demanding that there would be no separate status given um, to the Donbass region. Um, and so Pr President Poroshenko is in a difficult position here by the European Union pushing for those two steps. It's difficult to understand why they're doing that before Russia takes its steps. But that's, um, I think, a product of European Union having a terrible foreign policy and really trying to file away the Ukrainian problem as resolved, in inverted commas, by doing that. Um, so I think President Poroshenko is himself creating political instability and tension by blocking, as an oligarch, those steps in three key areas. But at the same time, the European Union is not making the situation any better by pushing him to go down the road of appeasing the separatists and appeasing Russia. Um, there are rumours that, um, for example, before the summer recess, that, uh, that Parliament, with the blessing of President Poroshenko, would move towards the idea of holding local elections. Then that, I believe, could be really to um, an outbreak of um, potentially political instability, similar to what we had outside the Ukrainian Parliament last year. To recap, um, the, the appointment of Yuri Lutsenko will, will not help President Poroshenko at all. It will damage his ratings more. It will increase Ukraine fatigue in the West. It will increase political tension and make him even more a source of political instability. 
Um, and and from that point of view, with the European Union pushing him to take those other two steps of holding local elections and um, special status for the separatist regions, that is all a potential, I would say, source of instability. Um, we have a new factor in Ukrainian politics. The new factor, which we've never had before, is the military, people who have had military experience. Um, this changes the dynamics of the country. Um, quite a large number of those who were fighting or continue to fight um, were from and with the proliferation of weapons, um, for example, whenever we're stopped at roadblocks in, in the front line, the first thing that the soldiers or, or police at the roadblocks ask is, are you carrying weapons? Because the president of Ukraine is terrified of weapons being brought back to Kiev. So I think Ukraine is in a potentially dangerous situation on the questions of political instability and political tension. Um, how that will be resolved down the road, I think certainly preterm parliamentary elections is likely. I don't think impeachment is a fe is a feasibility, um, but um, but President Poroshenko is making himself unelectable for a second term in office. He's in a far worse predicament than Yushchenko because Yushchenko didn't have to deal with bloodshed on the Maidan and didn't have to deal with a war where people have died, people have seen others suffer, and people have seen their friends being wounded, you know, losing limbs um, and, and being killed. So once you have that combustible mix, then inevitably um, there's going to be, um, I think, tension. And to give you one example, which I'll finish on, um, this really great um, angel from Ivana Frankivsk that I met, who's a pensioner, but she's devoting her time as a medic to Ukrainian soldiers. The soldiers call her mother because they really respect her in terms of how she's helping to treat them. She talked about one of the latest scandals. Um, the Ministry of Defense um, um, eight up-to-date um, um, ambulances, you know, Western ambulances, I think they were Mercedes Benzes, were fully equipped with all sorts of medical equipment which would work on different parts of the front line. Each of these is worth um, or costs a quarter of a million dollars. Instead of um, buying these, the money was pocketed and used to buy expensive cars for corrupt members of the families of Ministry of Defense officials. And the, the vehicles sent to the front line, which I, one of which I saw, were old Soviet ambulances from the 70s or 1980s with no equipment inside and really rickety. And this is one of the typical corruption stories you hear, which inevitably gets soldiers and then their families who hear about this, and then journalists, extremely angry that this is, continues to happen and, and, and leads to tension. A second example is how is it so surreal that a British person like me is transporting to the front line and to Ukraine soldiers ex-British army fatigues to give to Ukrainian soldiers. Why? Because you, <clears throat> British army fatigues, like I'm sure Canadian or American or French, are far better quality and they're fireproof. And yet they cost a third to a half of the price of Ukrainian army fatigues. <clears throat> British army fatigues um, cost 400 hryvni for summer, summer um, type um, fatigues and 800 for winter type fatigues. They're both fireproof. Ukrainian fatigues cost 1500 hryvni. Obviously there's corruption involved and they, they really poor quality and they get ripped really quickly. So I am seeing Ukrainian soldiers walk around with uniforms with little British Union Jacks on them. And there are countless examples of this. So, so those kind of corrupt schemes are continuing. They're even more um, likely to get people angry because they're taking place when people continue to die on the front line. So, I mean, these are just two examples of many 
um, that are brought up by soldiers, brought up by journalists and others, and um, which are not likely to be resolved by the new Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko. On that note, um, I'll, I'll, I'll end. Um, it's great to see Nadia Sauchenko free. There are still another 25 or so more Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars in captivity. Um, but Nadia Sauchenko will inevitably, I think, be a bone of contention for President Poroshenko because um, she was elected on the Batkivshina ticket to the Ukrainian parliament. And secondly, she will have very similar views to those Ukrainian soldiers that she was fighting with in 2014 on the front line. And I think she's going to have a lot lot of harsh things to say about Ukraine's leaders at her press conference on Friday. And she has every right to do so after just sitting illegally in Russian prisons for two years. Thank you.